Please welcome Chief Technology Officer and co-founder, Armis, Nadir Israel. Okay, first of all, I'd say you're a beautiful crowd, but honestly, it's completely dark. Uh, I hope everyone's enjoying RSA. Uh, it's a very fun, very big conference and a very, very hectic. I uh, don't know what you made of the title of this and kind of what drew you in, but to me, when I look at that, I think Minority Report, Precog, See Crimes Before It Happens, Stop It. And honestly, it's not that far off from what we'll talk about today and what technology can enable to do today, minus taking out eyeballs and other kinds of things in the original movie. A little bit about uh, Armis real quick. Uh, Armis deals in resilience and risk. It deals in uh, reducing risk and in making an organization actually secure. Our mission is to stop attacks before they happen, stop them before they hit some of the most powerful and important organizations on the planet. And what we'll talk about today is a little bit about what revolutions in technology allow us to do today, as opposed to a year ago, two years ago, and beyond. So let's start with the bad news. The bad news is that in that cybersecurity war, uh, the good guys are losing. We all kind of feel that uh, to a degree, uh, but there's two main reasons why that is. One is technology adoption, especially on the AI side, by the attackers. We'll get into that in a little bit. But the other one goes back to an age-old pain and question that even nine years ago at the formation of Armist, we heard from CISOs, CIOs, and everyone we talked to. No one knows what they have. You know, we can talk all day long about exposure management. We can talk about all the great things that you could do with all the data that you have. But a lot of organizations are still stuck way behind that at doing manual asset inventory, at doing the very, very basics. Those two together cause an incredible inadequacy between attackers and defenders. And we'll talk a little bit today about how to even that playing field and what to do with that. First of all, when it comes to the attacks and what AI can do today, we can talk a big game, but attackers are already playing at it and already doing things. Some of these are more familiar than others. Deep fakes have been around for a little bit now. Uh, I think that uh, most companies here in the room probably have already experienced the CEO WhatsApp or Zoom call to the finance department to get something through. I know that Armist itself has as well. And as we kind of move into the spectrum of different capabilities that are out there, these and none of these are any more science fiction. Uh, the idea of polymorphic malware and things that can adapt midway through, uh, a variety of different attack platforms that can take advantage of contextual agentic AI, all of these are absolutely science fact and things that are being used in the wild. You only need to Google anything from worm GPT uh, and a variant of variants of that to pretty much any kind of platform that's out there that being used by APT groups or by just run-of-the-mill cyber criminals. The biggest problem with all of this isn't even how much it generates scale and speed for the organizations and the criminal organizations that use it. It's about lowering the bar for many others who in the past needed lots of experience and lots of expertise to get there, but now can leverage off-the-shelf platforms to do exactly that. Now, all of these eventually are evolving. All of these are getting to a point where AI can be used very effectively against organizations to target both the systems as well as the human element in the process. The other problem is uh, vulnerability management. Age-old problem, it's been around for a long time, but has a lot of twists these days into how complicated and how complex it is. So when you look at breaches, uh, most of the cost, if you experience one, comes after, 
cleaning up a breach is very, very difficult and very, very costly. So the idea of staying left of boom, the idea of preventing things before they happen is a very appealing one, albeit a difficult one. I want to tell you a story about this graph that to me emphasized exactly from my own personal experience what this means. A few years ago, uh, we had a hospital that was doing uh, a proof of concept with Armis. They deployed Armis. Uh, Armis went and did what it usually does, find a bunch of different findings of things, prioritize them, produce a very succinct list of things that are the top critical entry points within the organization. You can imagine it was the run-of-the-mill stuff. VPN aggregator was two years behind on patching. Active Directory had a bunch of different issues with it, privilege escalations, the usual, usual stuff. Unfortunately, uh, while that hospital went to procure budget, they left the system on but did nothing from those different steps. Lo and behold, three months later, they get attacked, ransomware, completely owned. It was actually devastating. They, uh, I mean, hats off to them for not paying the ransom, but they were pen and paper for two months while they were storing systems. Now, ironically, uh, since uh, Armis was there, no one was actually looking at it, but it was there, uh, and being a passive system at nature, uh, it caught the entire thing. And as you can see exactly what happened and what transpired within their environment, they came in through the VPN aggregator, they made their way laterally to the Active Directory server, and from there, it was everything. Now, when you contrast these two things, the ease of just how much and how efficient it is to go and solve those VPN aggregators and Active Directories of the world versus the cost of two months of no operation pen and paper, the discrepancy is enormous. And this graph doesn't even begin to do it justice. To us, this means that it's inevitable that organizations should be thinking about how to move from being reactive to proactive. How do we move from a decade of education in the market that all you need are a bunch of detection and response tools, assume you're already breached, have a bunch of uh, alarms and sirens everywhere, and react to things versus have a very proactive approach of how to lock your doors and windows and prevent attackers from coming in in the first place. We did a survey recently, very recently. It's part of our cyber warfare report. And organizations by large, the statistic is that 58% of organizations feel that they are almost entirely reactive to threats that manifest. They do virtually nothing that they would perceive as proactive. They only respond to things. That, to me, is a statistic that we have to collectively change. But again, that's a difficult thing. Why is it so difficult? It's difficult because the example I gave of that hospital is great in hindsight, right? OK, we gave the right findings, but how would they know? That's because organizations actually have a ton of findings to contend with. A, a typical enterprise today has millions of vulnerabilities and security findings that they need to sift through. Most of them are not relevant. Very few of them are. Most of them are not top of mind for attackers. Very few of them are. But teasing out exactly what those special data points, what those particular things need to be, that's the hard part. And that's the part that today, again, technology exists to actually do way better than we have in the past. So wouldn't it be great if we actually did have an early warning system? If we understood exactly which threats are out there that could manifest within our environment, and in fact are manifesting in other environments, wouldn't it be great if we could sift through all these millions of different security findings and vulnerabilities and find exactly the ones that I should care about? And while I might care about all of them, I should definitely prioritize the ones that I need to fix right now before they could take advantage of. Now, if you take this and combine it with what we talked about before of AI being prevalent more and more in attack platforms, I think that the reality is we have to move faster, we have to move more effectively and more efficiently, and we have to be able to utilize these types of systems in order to get ahead of opponents. So 
To give you some idea of what exactly early warning could be, we're talking about um, what if you had two months head start on something like log for shell What if you could have you know, weeks to months ahead of pretty much every other major type of attack out there? That's the type of early warning that can exist today. And that might sound like magic, or it might sound a little bit like, okay, that's uh, an exaggeration. But the reality is it works in both directions. It's knowing about the really bad stuff ahead of time, but it's also knowing about the 98% of things that don't matter in the sense that no one is actually taking advantage of them. The second piece, by the way, that's important here to view things from an attacker perspective is that the entire industry for the last two decades has got us used to thinking in terms of criticality of things. What is critical? What is hard? But attackers know this too. And the reality is that attackers, a, long, a lot of times now, don't look at the top of the CVSS score list. They look at some of the mediums, they look at some of the highs, and they chain them together to create entry points because they know that we can't actually manage the entire list and stack of all the vulnerabilities. So again, knowing something evidence-based that is going to happen is a crucial and critical piece of this. So let's talk about how this type of system or how this kind of technology could be at work and what we could actually do with it. So the early warning idea comes from the fact that attackers also have their own chain of events and their own timeline for productionalizing things. When an attacker goes out and tries to attack a bank, new zero day, 365 day, doesn't matter what they end up using, there's a whole chain of events that need to happen before that kind of attack takes actual place. First of all, there needs to be some sort of prep, some sort of recon. Secondly, there's usually a weapon test that happens somewhere, one or more. And thirdly, at the end of the day, all of these, as it culminates towards entry, lateral movement, and actual compromise, there are a bunch of different signals and a bunch of different things that can be collected from in and around the global environment that would predict certain behaviors. So let's take a kind of a typical attack chain and kind of dissect that in that way. First of all, the chatter. This is a pretty easy one. I think anyone who has used any kind of LLM uh, can see the benefit and understanding of what LLMs can do with intelligence today that traditional methods over the last few years have not been able to. Traditional threat intelligence is all about keywords, domains, things that somehow reference your organization, and then you get stuck with the work of actually doing the analysis and understanding does this make sense? Is this related to me? Is it stale? Is someone actually talking about this in any kind of meaningful context? All of these different things. LLMs and specially trained models allow you to not only understand when something is very relevant to you, it also is uh, something that's very relevant to the type of targets that are you, and it can also analyze intent and context along the way. That's huge. I know it sounds like nuances, but it's huge in being able to really distill what makes sense and also what is actionable. The second thing, which to me is the much more exciting part, is that agentic AI allows you to build, for the first time, smart honeypots. We talked about attackers uh, before leveraging smart botnets smart adaptive networks of different devices that can take advantage of shifting patterns, can understand context, and can take advantage of it. The same idea can work just as well for smart honeypots. What if we took everything we know about different attack patterns, different attack surfaces, different things that we may have great visibility to? In the case of Armis, I can tell you that we monitor today over 5 billion assets worldwide. That's an incredible wealth of data and attack surfaces that can be used to mimic pretty much any kind of environment that you can think of. A retail store, a data center, a manufacturing plant, an airport, a hospital, anything. I mentioned before that attackers do weapon tests. Before they go and attack your Fortune 500 US bank, they go and attack banks in Brazil in Africa, in other places where the level of awareness to these types of things is lower. If you position 
those smart honeypots in the right places and take advantage of that, you get forewarning of credible attacks. Not only do you get the forewarning of that, you see who is attacking them, you see how they're attacking them, and you can build even on the fly TTPs that detect those types of exploits that you can then disseminate and protect yourself or at least detect when things are happening. Put all of these together, and what you start getting is a really interesting system that morphs on its own, that detects threats on its own, that implicates particular threat actors along the way and gives you all the information of who's doing what and where. And the most important thing of all, it makes it extremely actionable. This isn't just another needle in a needle stack. This is very specific, which CVE, which exploit, which security finding, which misconfiguration is being taken advantage of, and what exactly is the attack path that is used after that. Take that and combine that with your own environment, with how your own environment looks like, and you get something incredible. You get something that can really sift through the list, the millions and millions of different security findings, and tell you which one of them are actually being used against targets like yourselves in a way that would actually impact your environment. After that, there's a ton of things that you can do with that. There's a ton of things that you can do to affect the path of those attacks and what happens next. And the most important thing is, it's not reliant on any kind of uh, feed, any kind of information outside of what I just described. I will say that the results are pretty spectacular when it comes to the early warning. Those examples I kind of mentioned offhand, like log for shell or others, aren't made up. The rate in which you can detect things ahead of something like Sisakev is weeks to months, if not more than that. And the most important thing is, what is not important in my stack? What can I safely put off for a little bit later? Because in reality, no one is actually targeting them right now. So to kind of summarize um, for a second, that idea of early warning actually brings us into, it's not just about detecting things before they happen. It's about the ability to shift from being reactive to being proactive. It's about the shift of taking back control of what I can solve before things happen. I like to think, uh, I like to give the example a lot of times that if you think of your organization as a, as a house, it's almost like most cybersecurity companies out there and on the floor today would tell you that the solution for someone breaking into that house is to put a bunch of motion sensors and cameras, detect the attacker as it shifts between rooms, try to figure out things you know, right on the spot, instead of honestly just telling you which doors and windows you need to lock. That's a much more efficient, much more cost-effective, and much more effective way of doing things. Yes, that house for most of us is a house with millions of rooms that we don't even know how to kind of account for. And part of the challenge is intelligently saying which doors and which windows. But it's very doable. And AI, despite the buzzword of it all, is transforming massively what the art of the possible really is. And the great thing is, you don't even have to have your environment in order to start adopting some of these technologies. This type of thing can help organizations that are even still doing pencil and paper asset inventory. And there's plenty of other technologies out there that can definitely benefit a proactive risk management approach before we even get to any kind of attack actually happening. From my perspective, the ability to be proactive, the ability to have evidence to the things that you're actually tracking, and the ability to be preemptive, that ability to do precog, to figure out what's happening and fix things before they actually attack you, that directly relates to the mission I mentioned at the beginning. Stop attacks before they happen and achieve actual security. Thank you very much, everyone. Continue having fun at RSA.